uh, Clubman up on the uh, lift and up on jack stands with the uh, wheel removed. Let's talk a little bit about in ordering the Cooper. We got every option we could get you know, on the interior and the electronics and some of the suspension, but we didn't want to spend the additional money on a uh, larger engine, the turbo and the John Cooper Works package, um, because we're going to take out the engine and sell it on eBay anyway. That's right. Uh, so we spent about $32,000 on the base vehicle, and we did get, as part of that, the sport suspension. And that's, uh, what do we have here? Well, we got in the sport suspension package, we've got the uh, uh, sport shocks as well as the sport springs. So we've got a standard ride height on the vehicle, and we have uh, a we have a better we have a better uh, progression in terms of the suspension, a little more sporty, a little more connected to the road. Okay, so that would normally give us a stiffer suspension. I uh, I'm kind of a soft ride kind of guy, but we're going to add about 800 pounds of batteries in this, so these mm -hmm. larger springs are going to give us uh, a little bit. Uh, by the time we add the 800 pounds to it. We should be back pretty close to our original ride, shouldn't we? That's that's what we're uh, that's what our projection is. The John Cooper Works version, and we originally had a replacement brake set from the dealer, and it really wasn't what we wanted. Uh, but you can get the Cooper with a larger front brake disc. Um, what do we have that that it comes with uh, with your stock disc? Well, what we've got is we've got an 11 inch. Uh, vented rotor, so it, it has some cooling. Uh, we also have a uh, floating caliper. This is a TRW caliper here, and it's a floating caliper as well. Okay. The um, With the additional weight of the 800 pounds uh, of batteries, um, I'd like to have better braking. The other thing we found in driving an electric car is that um, when you take your foot off of the accelerator in a combustion engine automobile, the car slows down itself. Mm -hmm. um, in the uh, electric power plant, when I take my foot off the accelerator, uh, sometimes it feels like the car is actually speeding up. Uh, and in, in cases where I'm going downhill to a stoplight, uh, it actually is. This is a little <laughs> eerie at first. Uh, you get used to it quite quickly but you tend to use the brakes more than you do with a combustion engine. On this Mini Cooper project, we're going to use a MES DEA 200-250 AC induction motor and their TIM 600 controller, and that'll give us some regenerative braking. Um, now, there's a couple ways to, to deal with that regenerative braking. If we hook it up where we take our foot off the accelerator and that kicks in, Mm -hmm. then it would work more like a uh, combustion engine car. But I've gotten where I kind of like that glide down the hill and sort of slingshot up the next hill using no electricity. That's perfect. I'm not sure that putting energy back into the batteries, we get as much back in there as I've got in kinetic energy rolling forward. So I want to connect that to like our brake light circuit where it only comes into play when I put my foot on the brake pedal. Uh, but I'd still like to have uh, a lot bigger brakes on the car. All right, so in going to a larger rotor, um, we're going to have to go to a larger wheel, too, aren't we? What's the, what do we have with the, the stock mini wheel that came with it? What we've got is a 15-inch uh, wheel, which, yes, the, the minimum wheel size for this application is a 17, or you could go to an 18-inch wheel as well. Well, if we went to an 18, we'd have to make some adjustments to our electric uh, variable steering, too, though, wouldn't we? That's what, that, that's what uh, the manual says, that we would have to uh, redo the, uh, the, the steering, the turning radius. So I like going to the 17-inch wheel. What are, we, uh, what are we proposing here? Uh, what we're looking at here, Jack, this is uh, ADR is the manufacturer. Uh, Venomous is the style of this particular wheel. This is a 17-inch wide uh, diameter wheel, excuse me, and a 7-inch wide rim. Okay. The, uh, I noticed we're going to a lower profile tire. This is a 
205 uh, 40 what's the what's the stock uh, tire size the, the stock size is a 175 65 15 okay so that 65 gives the ratio of the width to the height so we have a little more tire here between the wheel and the and the tread and this one's a 40 so it's a little bit shorter i like that look uh, anyway and it should give us a little bit of a ride as well wouldn't it 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 will and what we've done here is the is the classic plus two, uh, which means we went two inches more in, in the rim diameter, and we dropped about the equivalent size in the, uh, in the tire height. That way our overall rolling diameter will remain the, relatively the same, and we should our, shouldn't throw our speedometer off. And the, I think that's so. probably a good concept, because with this uh, engine control module and some of the advanced instrumentation we have in the car, uh, I don't really want to have to... Uh, deal with a different uh, total diameter um, for our distances and speeds. All right, Brian, if we uh, are going to a different wheel, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we have to do to mount that wheel on here. I see a rather unusual bolt here on the uh, rotor, the existing rotor. I'm used to seeing a lug bolt sticking out, and we put a lug nut on it. Mini Cooper has opted to use a, uh, a one-piece lug bolt, uh, which, is, which is a uh, 14 by 1.25 thread, and we're going to have to convert over to a stud and a lug nut. Okay. Our system for the uh, other one, I've got a little tool here that we use uh, with the... Uh, what do you call these, a tuner lug? You call them a tuner lug nut. A lot of the uh, wheels that are being made now are going to that smaller uh, lug nut. Okay, and, and so we have to have this conversion stud. What, uh, so we need 14 millimeter 1.25 to made into the hole. Exactly. All right, but what does the lug nut use? The lug nut is a 12 by 1.5. It's a 12 millimeter little coarser thread. Okay, so we've got to reduce the diameter from 14 to 12 millimeters, and we're going to increase the, uh, or coarsen the thread from the existing um, 1.25 on the rotor to a 1.5 on the outside. Exactly. All right, this is, uh, looks like it's kind of important. These uh, rotors, we've got a little bolt here that holds this on. That can't be what, uh, what keeps that rotor from flying off the car, is it? No, actually, it is the torque of the uh, of the wheel that uh, that keeps uh, to the to the steering knuckle actually behind it that is actually keeping that uh, uh, keeping. Right. That. So these uh, threads are actually in the hub behind the rotor, and we're going to make a sandwich with the uh, the hub, the brake rotor, the wheel, and then this. Uh, Tuner, tuner lug. Exactly. That's that's really what happens. This is just a locating bolt, and uh, it's really the wheel that uh, keeps that on. Okay. And so I guess it's kind of important to um, um, have those torqued to some specific values. Yeah, 105 foot pounds is a is going to be, I think, a nice uh, a nice torque value. Okay. Let's go take a look at uh, at what we're doing uh, for the new brake kit. We've taken a look at what we've got on the car with the TRW assist.